let's dive right into the fascinating world of flight. Good. So what's the first thing we need to understand? The basic principles of physics that play a pivotal role in making flight possible. We're talking about gravity, air pressure, and force here. Now, the one thing we all know and experience every day is gravity. It's that unseen force keeping us grounded, literally. <laughs> but when it comes to flight, gravity is more like the bad guy. It's constantly pulling objects, including airplanes, towards the Earth. So how do airplanes overcome gravity's pull and manage to soar high in the sky? Well, that's where air pressure and force come into play. Air pressure is simply the force exerted by the weight of air on the surface below it. It decreases as we go higher into the atmosphere. This principle is crucial because it helps create lift, which we'll talk about in more depth later. And then we have the concept of force. And in the simplest of terms, force is a push or pull upon an object resulting from the object's interaction with another object. In the context of flight, the forces we're mainly concerned with are lift, weight, or gravity, thrust, and drag. So to sum up, the science of flight is essentially a game of managing and balancing these forces. Gravity trying to pull the plane down, air pressure, and lift working to push it up and keep it in the air, and thrust and drag. It's a delicate dance of physics happening right above our heads every day. Amazing, isn't it? <sighs> now let's move on to the next part, where we'll delve into the concept of lift, the force that defies gravity and keeps an airplane in the air. All right, let's delve into the concept of lift, an absolutely crucial force that makes flight possible. Now, remember when we talked about gravity being the bad guy always trying to pull everything, including airplanes down towards the Earth? Well, lift is the superhero that opposes gravity, allowing an airplane to ascend and stay up in the sky. Here's how it works. Lift is created by the flow of air over the wings of the airplane. The wings, or airfoils as they're technically called, have a special shape. They're curved on the top and flatter on the bottom. This shape is key in creating lift. As the airplane moves forward, air flows over the top and bottom of the wing. The curvature of the top surface forces the air above the wing to travel faster than the air below the wing. According to Bernoulli's principle, faster moving air has lower pressure. So we end up with a situation where there's high pressure below the wing and low pressure above it. And voila. That's lift. The difference in pressure creates an upward force that opposes gravity, allowing the airplane to rise into the air. Think of it as a tug of war match where lift and gravity are the two teams. When the lift team pulls harder, the airplane ascends. When the gravity team pulls harder, the airplane descends. And when both teams are pulling equally hard, the airplane cruises at a constant altitude. That sounds like a high stakes match, doesn't it? For some reason, has secrets is really, really exciting. Similar, but don't worry, our pilots and engineers are excellent at this game. Now, in our next section, we'll learn about the other two players in this game of forces, drag and thrust. All right. Let's move on to the next exciting part of our journey through the science of flight drag and thrust. Remember our earlier analogy of the game of tug of war? Well, while lift and gravity are doing their thing, there's another tug of war happening simultaneously that plays a crucial role in controlling the speed and direction of an airplane. On one side, we have thrust. The force that propels the airplane forward this is produced by the engines, which could either be jet engines or propellers. When the engines are fired up, they push out a stream of hot gases, 
or a propeller pushes air backwards. Newton's third law of motion tells us that for every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. This backward push of gases or air results in a forward push for the airplane. That's thrust for you. On the opposing side, we have drag, the resisting force that acts in the opposite direction to the oncoming airflow. Essentially, drag is the air's way of saying it's trying to slow the airplane down. Drag comes in two forms, parasite drag and induced drag. Parasite drag is a combination of form drag and it's skin friction resistance due to air friction on the airplane surface. Induced drag is related to the creation of lift. As lift increases, so does induced drag. So the airplane's speed and direction are the result of this delicate balance between thrust and drag. When thrust is greater than drag, the airplane speeds up. When drag is greater than thrust, it slows down. If thrust and drag are equal, the airplane flies at a steady speed. It's quite a balancing act, isn't it? But it's this beautiful interplay of forces that allows us to travel through the skies. In the next part, we'll delve into how the airplane's design, particularly the shape and material of the wings, uh, enhances aerodynamics. All right, now that we've got a good understanding of the forces at play, let's talk about the role of an airplane's design in making all this possible. You've probably noticed that all airplanes have a similar basic shape. This isn't just a style choice, but a carefully thought out design that enhances aerodynamics. The most crucial part of this design, the wings. The shape and material of an airplane's wings play a significant role in its ability to fly. An airplane's wings are designed in a shape called an airfoil with a curved upper surface and a flatter bottom surface. This shape is critical for creating lift. As we discussed earlier, as the airplane moves forward, the air above the wing moves faster than the air below the wing, creating a difference in pressure that lifts the plane upward. This design is a result of understanding and applying Bernoulli's principle, which states that an increase in the speed of a fluid, in this case air, occurs simultaneously with a decrease in pressure. But it's not just the shape that's important. The material of the wings is also crucial. The wings need to be strong enough to withstand the forces of flight, yet light enough to allow the airplane to lift off the ground. The balance is achieved through the use of materials like aluminum, titanium, and even carbon fiber composites in modern aircraft. Use the wings also house the flaps and ailerons, control surfaces that help the airplane change direction and manage the amount of lift and drag during different phases of flight. And then there's the body or fuselage designed to be as aerodynamically smooth as possible to reduce drag. The engines, or whether they're mounted on the wings or the body, are designed to provide enough thrust to overcome drag and gravity. So you see, every curve, every material choice, every inch of an airplane's design is there for a reason, to make flight possible and efficient. <sighs> now, isn't that amazing? Let's move on to the final part of our journey, where we'll discuss how atmospheric conditions affect flight performance. Let's now turn our attention to the atmospheric conditions, like wind speed and air density, and how they impact the performance of a flight. You might have noticed how the weather report is always a part of pre-flight announcements. That's not just for small talk. The atmospheric conditions play a significant role in how an airplane flies. First, let's talk about wind speed. Wind, wind can be both a friend and a foe to an airplane. A headwind or wind that blows against the airplane can increase drag and slow the plane down, meaning it'll need more thrust to maintain speed. But while taking off and landing, a moderate headwind can actually be beneficial 
as it increases the airspeed and helps produce more lift. On the other hand, a tailwind, or wind that blows in the same direction as the airplane, can help it move faster and save fuel. However, it can also make landing a bit more challenging. Then, there's air density, which refers to the amount of air in a given space. Air density decreases with altitude. The higher you go, the thinner the air becomes. This is why climbing a high mountain can leave you gasping for breath. But what does this have to do with airplanes? Well, air density affects the performance of an airplane in several ways. Lift, for instance, is directly related to air density. The denser the air, the more lift an airplane can generate. That's why airplanes sometimes have trouble taking off from high altitude airports where the air is thin. Air density also affects engine performance. Jet engines need air to mix with fuel for combustion. So in areas of low air density, the engines may not perform as well. Hmm. So as you can see, flying is not just about getting from point A to point B. It's a complex dance of forces shaped by the design of the airplane and the conditions of the atmosphere. But understanding the fascinating science behind it all, well, that just makes the journey even more exciting. And with that, we've covered all the basics of the science of flight.